First, obviously, I'm doing the 75 hard challenge. I started again Monday. Well, I'm recording this Tuesday, but I started again on Monday. So I'm going again because that was a full week because I kind of flopped on the Saturday that I started. So I'm going to go again from Monday as being my first day, which will take me across to... So I should finish the 75 hard challenge on the 26th of March. So that's the time I'm going to finish. Now, the plan is to probably do updates. I'm going to do updates probably every 10 days up until the last week and then of course i'll do it you know i'll do the obviously on the fifth day so i'm going to every 10 days i'm going to check in give you guys an update i should obviously do one this day it? anyway i'll do one on the, on the 10 days so this will be the first day but i'll do the 10 day one coming up um and obviously you know it's a standard plan i goes you guys already heard about it you gotta follow a diet no cheat meals no alcohol um uh working out twice a day uh, one 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 of them has to be outdoors and also drinking a gallon of water and obviously reading 10 pages of a book um per day which shouldn't be too bad and if we're talking about books i've actually got some new books that i'm going to be reading for this month so if you want to know what kind of books i'm into then check these bad boys out number one i've got less than zero by brett easton ellis um i only picked this up randomly because of the weekend album there's actually a track on there called less than zero and i thought hmm, i wonder if you got inspired by the brett easton ellis book which i haven't read i've read a few of his books already obviously he's the guy that did american psycho so i went to check out less than zero because i heard this is rather good maybe some people would even say this is actually better than american psycho so i went to check that out and obviously i got the heads up from you know the weekend that he's obviously been in that sort of zone so i picked up less than zero by Brett Easton ellis so that should be a fun read i've also got the autobiography of robbie williams called feel it's meant to be the best one i think this is the one that was the controversial one the one that had a little like illicit details and insights into how not amazing it is to be mega famous as robbie williams was because at one point even still now robbie williams i'd imagine if you walk down the street somewhere in the uk would get mobbed he was like the number one he was like a, he was amazing right? i mean like he's he was amazing a real jack the lad um made good songs had a bit of a bop and groove to him even being a white boy Do you know i mean he just was effortlessly cool which is really rare too because he came from a boy band and usually guys that come from boy band back then weren't the coolest so for him to be cool back then and be unabashedly british too he didn't try and pretend to be american or anything i think that really worked out for him and again for a pop star man he was on another level so definitely i'm, I'm looking forward to reading this one and also the reason why i picked it up is because he's got a recent episode he was on um he was a guest on the fear of one podcast cost so if you're a fan of the la comedy scene guys and you like the stuff that i speak about when it comes to brendan shaw and the the kid i recommend you check out fear of one's podcast he's got one where he's talking to robbie williams and this other guy who if i'm not mistaken was one of chris D'Elia's friends i think he's ditched chris D'Elia, obviously off the back of his allegations and now he's hanging around all Williams. But i'm pretty sure that guy used to hang around with chris D'Elia a lot i forgot his name irish dude but um rob williams is a star of the show he really gives a great interview super insightful very inquisitive he clearly is a fan of theo's comedy too and i didn't know he actually lives in la full time which is crazy which explains why we don't really see him in the uk too tough he actually likes being anonymous kind of in the us because obviously he's a bigger star here in the uk than he is in the us but I recommend you check it out. It's Fear of One podcast. Um, he, Robbie Williams was on there recently. Amazing, amazing episode. Next, I've got the first book in the series from The Expanse because I'm currently watching it at the moment. It's in this last season, unfortunately. I think it's only eight episodes uh, for the entire season. I think there might be one left or maybe two left. I'm not too sure. But I thought, you know what, in order to because I think we have to wait a while for the expense to come back again because I think there's some sort of licensing thing happening where they can't able to... What did I read in the subreddit? Something about... There's some weird licensing rule where they can't just immediately do another season. So they have to kind of put it on ice and then do it for another company and then relaunch it on another platform. I don't know. some complicated thing. But it might be one of the best sci-fi tv series of all time in terms of the detail in terms of the um, hard science too right a lot of the science that goes into space travel is actually correct um really weird details that they didn't need to do that only kind of geeks like myself and other sci-fi fans would have clocked on allegedly because again i haven't read the book but supposedly from a lot of people on the subreddit and people that I follow on twitter they've said it, it's really really faithful to the book and in places where they take some creative license it makes sense right it's because some deals of book you can't always translate in the series and i guess vice versa so the bits that they did kind of run a mock and do their own thing on still made sense for the overall story so people have always said like if you really want to get a rich a kind of another layer to the series then if you should read the books so i'm going to be reading that as well for this month this is all for january and then the last thing i've got 
is the warrior diet and i got this randomly because i listened to a podcast featuring the guy i forgot his name he's like an anti-aging doctor dude and he was talking to another guy on a podcast i forgot i wish i remember the names and they mentioned how um all intermittent fasting and stuff is like not that new right because it's something obviously i'm doing now with the 75 hard challenge supposedly intermittent fasting isn't a new thing um and this guy called um ori hoff my hoff merkler is somebody that that, that that was a proponent of intermittent fasting before it was called that and i think he kind of ascribed to the idea of like eating once a day in order to get all these mad health benefits so i'm definitely going to be reading that as well to get a bit more hard science in my head when it comes to working out because i've always found not sure about you guys as great as it is to jump on a new diet again, because I've, yo, I'm a yo-yo guy. I go up and down in weight all the time, so I've been through this, you know, ring a lot. I always find, in order to give myself, in order to make myself convinced that I'm doing the right thing, and to also make sure I do the right, make the right decisions that I don't like drop off and do something dumb and, like eat a donut, I have to kind of have information to hand, and I think. <clears throat> Being able to read material and books on the kind of diet I'm doing or, ex yeah, basically in more information, maybe listen to a podcast, watch a, a video on YouTube. Usually those things kind of strengthen my resolve and allow me to kind of stick to what I'm doing and stick to the diet for the entirety of the time that I need to do it for. And hope, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with those um, books or the Worry Diet book I've got at the moment. So that's what I'm currently doing. And I can't really wait to see how I'm going to transform at the end of the 75 days. And again, it's less about the body thing. It's more so about the mind. Because it's been a long time since I've gone through this sort of like um, uh, kind of enforced discipline. I usually did it all, every single year. But obviously with the pandemic, I kind of dropped off as everyone else did. I kind of spent that first year of the pandemic just ballooning up to like, I don't know, nearly 280 pounds. It was insane. I'm about 260 now. The plan is to get myself down to 200. That's the plan. I want to get myself to 200. I know it's going to be a stretch to lose 60 pounds in 75 days, but, you know, um, stranger things have happened. So that's the plan I'm going to do. Aiming for it. Stretch goal. Moonshot. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, apart from that, what else is happening? Um, yeah, let's jump in right into it. Random bit of the show. So next news to kind of just get into straight away at the top of the show is this amazing news. Because okay, I haven't been on Instagram. I'm kind of purposely put myself away from it because I just want to stick to doing what I'm doing at the moment doesn't mean I've deleted it off my app or anything or dis disabled my account. I think that's usually a sign of somebody that doesn't have any willpower. And again, I'm somebody that is quite strong minded. I've got a lot of willpower. I'm very driven in the things that I do so I can leave it alone without touching it and getting excited.